Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hybridicious Episode 1 on FIFA 13. So this is my first ever FIFA 13 video, and I hope you guys enjoy. So let's start off this hybrid by introducing our goalie, and our goalie is my main man. I've only used him for around 10 games, and he's already my main man, so that says a lot about him. Standing at 6'2", Sebastian Frey, and anyone who's tried Sebastian Frey this year will agree with me that he is the most overpowered goalie ever of everness for 600 coins you will not find a better goalie and um he's really overpowered because for the stats that you get and the height you pair that with the price and you know his popularity he shouldn't really be that good but for some reason he is that good and if you guys really want to know what that good means you just try Frey, put him in your team, put him on 6 chemistry, 7 chemistry, does not matter. This guy will perform a uh, great goalie and a very, very important player to have. I can imagine that the majority of my hybrids will have him unless I find another goalie as good as him, but I find that really, really doubtful. So next we move on to the defense, and in the left center back spot we have Jonas Kabul. Um, everyone was comparing him to last year's David Luiz, and he's not quite as good, but he's still really good. Uh, really fast um, in terms of his sprint speed, so any chase uh, to the ball, any one-on-one. -on -one, um, he usually wins because not only is he really fast, but he's also really strong. So he's really good at pushing people off the ball. Uh, you pair that with his height at six foot three and his uh, defensive aerial abilities. He's actually really good on corners. Although I've actually never scored a corner with him, which is really confusing because he always gets at least like one or two. Um, chances per game i'm just really poor at finishing corners and uh, four thousand coins so his price was fairly inflated that's because i bought him when the you know the game just came out so um every price is inflated so i would suggest that you guys do not pay attention to the prices as they tend to fluctuate a lot when the game is first released so um they really don't have any meaning whatsoever especially in a few weeks when you guys watch this episode it has no meaning whatsoever um, so next we move on to Koscielny. Koscielny, very similar to Kabul. Um, the only difference is he's a lot more agile, so he's a lot better at intercepting balls and keeping up with those faster, more agile players like Muriel. Um, that Colombian guy from the Serie A, that guy's ridiculously fast. But um, Koscielny does a pretty good job with him. Um, six foot one, so not as tall. And he is a bit weaker, but honestly, he's really good at winning headers. Um, I would actually say he wins more headers than Kabul. And obviously, 2,000 coins, that's not a fair reflection of how much he is worth. You could probably pick him up for under 1,000 uh, during a good time, considering he is a non-shiny. And then we move on to Lukas Piszczek finally getting the rating that he deserves. Um, 86 pace, 80 defending with a high attack work rate. Um, so he does look like going on offense, but honestly, guys, he always gets back on defense. Um, I'm very happy with the way that high attacking work rates influence how defenders um, act in game. Um, they seem to get back more on defense, so they've obviously changed what a high attacking work rate means for a defender. Um, as compared to, let's say, a striker, uh, because Lucas Piszczek always gets back on defense. You know, I had this problem last year with him um, where he would never kind of get back on defense. Now he's always back on defense. Um, honestly, I don't even have to use custom formations anymore because it's no longer a problem. And uh, pretty much think of him as the Polish Mika Richards, you know, just very overpowered, very strong, very fast, very solid defensively. And he's also very good at crossing, which is a very nice addition to this team. And then we move on to Armero. Armero, very similar to Piszczek. Um, the only difference is he's a lot weaker. He's a bit shorter and he likes to get more on offense. And what I mean by that is he's not quite always back on defense, uh, but that's never really a problem because I have Zuniga. And if you guys don't know, Zuniga actually has a high defensive work rate. So what basically happens, it's actually a really cool combo. Uh, Zuniga gets back on defense and Armero will overlap and Armero usually goes for a cross. And if not, um, Armero can lay the ball off to Zuniga and Zuniga will get a nice long shot onto goal. Um, so it's actually a really cool tactic having a left middle who gets overlapped by the left back. And then of course, Zuniga will just trail Armero. And um, if Armero happens to, you know, get his cross blocked or loses the ball, um, Zuniga can get back on defense. Um, so I thought that was actually a pretty cool combination. And then we move on to Nine Galan. I think everyone's familiar with Nine Galan. You know, when this game first came out, he was kind of considered a gem, uh, but he got popular very quickly. 
uh, basically because he is the Sirius version of Gundogan, basically an overall player that can do it all. And of course, he also has four-star skill moves, so he's a very fun player to use. Um, I think he has like 80 stand tackle with his nine chemistry bonus in game, so he's actually really, really good on defense, uh, which was quite surprising considering he wasn't really supposed to be that defensive type of player. Uh, but he does have that too, so that's a really nice addition. And then of course, we have the muscle in the middle of the midfield. I was like having a very strong presence in the middle and Fellaini does a pretty good job covering that role considering he is six foot four probably like six foot six with his afro just really really tall in game a very fun player to use considering he's so unique you know that afro just really stands out um you always know when you're using Fellaini um only three star skill moves I would like four but you know what you can't have it all uh, very good at passing very good defensively very strong and his positioning is definitely the best aspect. I was really surprised. Um, you know, usually slower, bigger players aren't really that good at intercepting the ball, but his positioning always allows him to, you know, intercept there, maybe even tip it out of play and just allow me to get back on defense. So a very fun player to use. And then we move on to the inform Washikovsky, the only inform on this team. As you guys can see, I spent quite a bit of money on him, um, around 26K. Now he is definitely worth 26K as um, he is a very early inform. And what usually tends to happen is they are quite rare considering not too many people actually get them in packs. And then of course in a few months, maybe even a few weeks, he's gonna be extremely expensive. Although I really can't see myself selling him considering he's so good in game. I'm really, really rapid. As you guys can see, I've already played 21 games, so he's played every single game. Um, definitely the fastest player I've used this year. I believe he has like 95 sprint speed, uh, great shot power, and a very clutch player, if I may add. Um, I had so many, like all those goals he scored, all five goals were probably like 85th minute, 90th minute, you know, tie game, I'm down a goal. Um, and he just comes up out of nowhere scoring maybe like a fluky header or just a really nice power shot. Um, so overall, great player. His only downfall, once again, only three-star skill moves, uh, but still a very fun player to use. And then we move on to probably, I don't know if I want to say, yeah, probably my favorite player on this team, Axel Witzel. He's just too fun to use. Uh, basically, the only difference between him and Fellaini is he is a bit shorter, better dribbling, worse defensively, but a better passer. His passing is only rated one higher, but for some reason, um, his passing is just so accurate. I'm really good at retaining possession, of course, with that afro. He's around 6'3 in game. He's got a very large afro. Um, Four-star skill moves, very fun to use. Another dominant presence wins a lot of headers, especially if I want to just, you know, kind of kick the ball up with my goalie. Uh, he usually wins the header, and it goes down to either Fellaini or Nainggolan, and then, of course, we go from there. Um, so overall, a very fun player to use. I would definitely recommend trying him out if you guys have not used him yet. And then we finish off the team with Lewandowski. And not too much to say about him. He's pretty much your perfect striker. What I mean by that, um, he's fast. He can hold his own, which is very important in the 4-4-1 formation or 4-4-1-1, um, considering he is a lone striker. Um, good at passing, good at playing 1-2s. He's fast enough, great dribbling. His vertical is insane. He wins every single header and um, great finishing. So overall, good player. You know, four-star weak foot as well, so you can finish on both feet. Um, so overall, a very fun team to use. The only weakness and probably the only spot of the team I might change is the left side. Even though I kind of like that armero Zuniga combo, I might want to try something else. Um, so overall, a very fun team to use. And let's move on to the goals. All right, so before I show you guys the goals, I'll quickly go over the custom formation. So it's pretty simple. I go into 4-2-3-1 in game, and I basically move Nainggolan and Falaini back. As you guys can see, it actually takes two pauses to make the formation, which is a pain in the ass uh, because they don't actually save for me. I have to make a formation every single time I play. Uh, basically move the defense back a few spots, put Kabul on a high defensive work rate, and the most important thing on this team is to make sure that Lewandowski is not on a high defensive work rate. Um, for some reason, he has high, high work rates, which is a huge pain in the ass. Um, he usually just tends to go on defense, and um, Witzel is the highest player on the field, and that never works out too well. Uh, but as you guys can see, Lewandowski has a wonderful finishing, and the entire right side of the pitch, um, that kind of Borussia Dortmund combination works out quite well. As you guys can see, Fellaini, he just looks so awesome. Like I just love doing roulettes with him. He looks so funny because he's so massive. Um, but as I was saying, guys, not too many nice goals scored as I am playing in uh, the divisions. 
and I'm currently in Division 2. It's not too hard. Everyone just pays for it, so it's really predictable. In my opinion, it's really easy to play against. Um, I have lost a few close games, though. You know it's going to happen. Uh, but overall, it's actually not too bad. The thing is, I can't really score too many nice goals because I don't come up against any retards. Um, you know, everyone is uh, pretty good at picking up my skill moves. And basically, after halftime, everyone... Um, just uh, finds me really predictable because I kind of tend to do the same things with the ball rolls and the roulettes. Um, so it's a little bit more difficult scoring nice goals, but I eventually will get some. Um, overall, I've been more focused on just scoring goals in general. You know, I haven't really been um, trying to uh, have like fluid gameplay. Like in FIFA 12, I would really concentrate on having fluid passing, um, you know, everything being really realistic, using a lot of ball rules, making everything look really smooth. Uh, that's not really a priority for me right now. I'm just trying to win games and have some fun, and it's been pretty good so far. Um, the only thing that I think everyone's already probably uh, picked up on is that shot power is ridiculous in this game, and you guys will see in a few seconds. Like, it's just nonsense. Uh, but overall, I think I've touched on all the basic things. Um, the only other thing I'd probably like to mention to you guys, I was like uh, giving you guys advice, is to play on ultra defensive. That is very successful. Um, it does not hinder the way you play on offense, guys, I can assure you. Um, especially for anyone that's really good on offense, you know, I do a lot better on offense than I do on defense. Um, ultra defensive is basically like normal from last year. It's ridiculous how attacking players are this year. And right there, as you guys can see, a nice game winner from Nine Galan. Uh, but overall, guys, I hope you enjoy the episode. As I was saying, play on ultra defensive because it will help you out. And I will be uploading maybe in FIFA 15. Depends how much time I have. All right. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.